Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constant here. This is Becky. We're speaking slowly today. We're trying. Doing our best. But my thoughts, they're a lot faster than the way I'm speaking. <laughs> so I'm going to speak really fast right now and we get straight <laughs> into Z9 news. Well, I think the whole industry now is literally in end of the year mode, so we don't actually get many news nowadays yeah we don't get things in terms of new releases now because it's literally run up to holiday season and everyone going off work for a few weeks but we do have some news for you so and let's start with z9 so finally the cameras are getting to real photographers for extensive testing so the first one up is tom hogan from the United States of America. He runs this little blog and a lot of people read him. So he actually says that Nikon USA has provided him with a pre-production model and he also has started a Z9 blog on his mirrorless website. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to have a little read of that, his blog is Z System User and then this one is called the Z9 Blog. Absolutely. Tom Hogan is famous for him being quite critical to Nikon system, but fair critical, I would say. Yes, and also very technologically knowledgeable. So he he comes from a position of knowledge to criticize the points that he makes. Absolutely. So then he goes through all the sessions of the camera. He says what they've done differently compared to the previous models, what he thinks is a good thing. So one thing he pointed out is actually previously to Z9, you had about three function buttons to assign things to. And the third function button was always limited to pretty much like six settings and that's it. Mm. Z9 is the first camera we have six function buttons. So, you know, not just FN buttons, but the other ones that you can assign. It's a lot. But also the choice of what you can assign all those buttons to is much better. So you can see that those little things that are not really sexy for the YouTube internet mentioning. So he goes through those things. So if you definitely want to learn more about the camera, I would definitely check it out. Excellent. We also have photographer Brad Hill, who shoots wildlife and nature. Um, He has a camera in his hands and is writing about it in his blog. Again, as a professional photographer, they're not just interested in technical specifications and, you know, megapixels and all that. They're more interested in things like recall shooting functions, starlight view that no one talks about, or menu banks. So again, those little things that are not exciting for the YouTube crowd, but more important to professional photographers. So do check it out. He also answers the question, can you turn off the Z9 subject recognition feature with the push of a single button? That's very niche. The answer is yes, with caveats. So for more information, do check out his blog. It is uh, naturalart.ca. Fantastic. And then if you haven't seen yet the six-episode series on Z9 by Morten Hilma in Svalbard, definitely check it out. It's essential viewing. I think it's really nice to see the Z9 making it into the hands of pro photographers for more than a couple of days because as we know from speaking to the wonderful Joe McNally, he only had the camera for I think 48 hours, if that. Absolutely. And it's so important. Obviously, it's vital that Nikon staff get their hands on, particularly training staff like the likes of Rishi and Rob McNeese Agreed. in the UK. Absolutely. Uh, but having real world photographers who are professional photographers shooting with the camera for a length of time is incredibly useful for us as being on the receiving end, being able to see what the camera is able to do. Absolutely. I totally agree with you on that because the problem with professional photographers, they don't really have time to run a YouTube channel or Twitter account or Instagram account. They actually out there in the field taking pictures for all of us. Mm. So in my opinion, it's actually, you know, it's okay. All the YouTube guys, they had their cameras, they had their first deep at the cameras, but what they would do, they would just give you first general impression. Wow, 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 hype, hype, hype. And that's it. When you start to get the professional photographers getting hands on the cameras, they look at the cameras differently. They use them differently. They use them for actual real world applications instead of just YouTube and trying to track a car on London streets like us. Um, So it is very important. I absolutely agree with you. I really hoping that over the Christmas and New Year period, we will start to see more of those technical articles popping up. Absolutely. The next one up is a bit out of left field. Uh, Canon says that their flagship Canon EOS R3 could take up to six months to be delivered on pre-orders. Yes, they said the ongoing chip shortage and general supply chain constraints have impacted nearly every camera and lens manufacturer. In fact, not just lens and camera 
camera manufacturers, as I was telling Con recently, but also the printing industry. Absolutely. There's a shortage of FSC approved paper. Absolutely. Not just toilet paper. <laughs> no, like paper for printing books, which is very important. Um, just last week, Sony announced it would no longer take orders for some of its older mirrorless cameras. Now Canon has published a notice informing consumers that orders for the EOS R3 mirrorless camera could take up to six months. This means, according to Canon, it may take more than half a year to deliver when you place a new order for the EOS R3 and RF 14 to 35 F4 LIS USM lens. Yeah, well, I know a photographer who actually had to wait five months also for Fuji GFX 100S. Right. So, you know, so those things are happening not just to Nikon users, but to all of us photographers. So, Stay united and stay strong. Exactly. And also book readers too. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why you're ordering Kindle. Is that what it is? That's why I'm ordering a Kindle. That, but also audio. A lot of people are transitioning over to audio, I think, because there's a shortage of paperbacks. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I, I'm subscribed for audio for like last two years because I do find that I actually prefer to listen to the books than read them. Mm. And I normally do that, let's say, when I play FIFA on PlayStation and then I need something to listen to. That's so interesting. Or when I cook, because yes. I do find sometimes when I read that my mind can't concentrate on it, but I can concentrate on sound much better and I can do other things while doing that. That's so interesting. Anyway, that's me. saving I, trees. The little fact that I can't read doesn't help. <laughs> but somehow you manage to write this every week. <laughs> exactly. Without... And you spell a mistake thanks to autocorrect. Amazing. The 24120 news is that Rishi has actually published his review, his first look on his YouTube channel for the Nikkor Z 24120 F4S. So please do go and have a look at that. That's true. He didn't have the lens quite long, isn't it? I think last time we had it here, he just literally got the lens in for testing, isn't it? Yeah, it was the day or so beforehand. Uh, and he's had it for a little bit of time now, along with the 100 to 400 mm -hmm. and obviously the Z9. So looking forward to seeing his opinion. Absolutely. So the camera and the lenses, I still expect it to arrive by the end of this year, at least the first shipment. So fingers crossed, stay tuned. If you have any update, we'll let you know. We will. So let's go to some other Nikon related news. Mm, so Nikon introduces the AXR MP Multiphoton confocal mo microscope confocal microscope <laughs> <laughs> let me try that again all right i maybe will open the link so it's kind of you see you'll see what it looks like Ooh, mm, fancy it looks so high tech it looks, it looks like if microscope and the 3d printer would have a baby yes it does so nikon introduces the axr mp multi-photon confocal microscope mm -hmm. is it named after you exactly <laughs> confocal I see con in the title, I upload. Mm -hmm. So the AXR MP Multiphoton Confocal Microscope can acquire high resolution, large field of view images deep within living organisms at high speed. That's pretty good, isn't it? So let's go through the main features. So you've got high speed scanning of high resolution images with large field of view to efficiently acquire large amounts of information. So by high resolution, we actually mean 2K by 2K. So it's only 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels. Mm, okay. um, but also you got a large area of 22 millimeter, which can be acquired at high speed. Mm -hmm. it, responding to diverse experimental needs by providing a large space under the lens. There's a height of 40 centimeters provided under the microscope for living specimens to be exactly. placed under the microscope, exactly. which must be very difficult because they'd have to stay super still. That's interesting. Do they think they freeze them or something? <laughs> Maybe tranquilize them. I don't know. It depends on what they're using it for. Okay. And also the lens on the microscope allows for tilt. So yes. as well, if you can't just point it over the subject, you can also tilt the lens. The fun bit is they actually have lenses available for this microscope. They call them objectives. Yes. The old-fashioned way, but yes. uh, they're different lenses available. So you, it's another lens system that you can make. Yes. Do you think they're ever going to make in some sort of FTZ adapter? I doubt it somehow. This will be available in spring 2022. The price hasn't been announced yet, but if you would like more information, you can visit... Nikon website and read the press release <laughs> He's and see some images. Finishing my sentences for me. Well, I thought you got lost. I did. <laughs> I was like, visit somewhere. Here I am with a save. There's a place that you can visit. All right. Well, the next one up, Nikon also will support 15th FINA World Swimming Championships in 2021. Mm -hmm. So Nikon announced its official partnership with the Federation International de Natation. FINA. At the 15th FINA World Swimming Championships, which will be held from December 16th 
to the 21st this year, so coming up pretty soon, mm -hmm. in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. Absolutely. So you'll see a lot of Nikon logos everywhere. But at the, in addition to that, Nikon Middle East will set up a service depot for Nikon Professional Services, which is NPS, for the professional photographers covering the event to offer supports and services, including equipment, inspections, clean, minor repairs, and the loan of equipment. Yeah. Apparently, they first partnered with FINA in 2007, and they've actually been part of that event ever since. And this leads us to the question, are you a good swimmer, Becky? I am a terrible swimmer. Like, I would drown if someone threw me in the ocean. <laughs> so you're not going to participate in this competition, I, I guess? I will not be participating. Well, me neither. <laughs> can you swim? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can swim about 30 meters and then I'm wow. done. Wow, know. that's better than me. And then I think, I need to hit the gym. <laughs> what? Oops. <laughs> Clink! For sure. Look, <sighs> why does it... Okay, Becky, with the Christmas coming up, we get a lot of questions. What shall I buy for myself and no one else? Yes, or what shall I buy with this budget? Or what should I buy for this person who's very difficult to buy, but I want to get them into photography? The Nikon edition. Yes. So. All right, let's start with mirrorless. Always. <laughs> yeah, so we've got DX and FX. Mm -hmm. All right, so in DX we have two bodies. We've got Z50 and ZFC. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about them. So the Z50 for its price point, is a fantastic sort of starter, keen enthusiast, or even slightly more serious photographer, but wanting a small and light mm -hmm. travel companion. So straight away, the best value for money in the X range. Yeah, okay, absolutely. And it was last year as well. I remember talking about this and mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's the best value for money in terms of a camera outfit, really. Mm -hmm. The ZFC is a close second, though. Mm -hmm. Because of its retro styling, it's quite a unique gift, I would say, that if you have someone in your photographic life that shoots film or mm -hmm. once had an FM2N or an FM3A or, or still does, yeah, it's quite a, a very, nice hark yeah, back. I agree. A very young person who is starting to get into photography and likes the retro stuff or the person who had film cameras back in the day and, mm. have, and feels nostalgia about it. Exactly. So I think that those two DX cameras both definitely have a place, but there's also DSLRs. And we can't forget those entry-level DSLRs. No, we can't forget DSLRs. No. <laughs> we will never forget DSLRs. <laughs> Um, they do need some love because quite often a, for example, a starting photographer yeah. or a young person who hasn't yet dabbled in photography or someone who has perhaps only taken pictures on their phone but wants to move up to something a bit higher quality and wants to learn photography properly, then the most obtainable thing for them is is a D3000 series or a D5000 series, even secondhand. Absolutely. We have a lot of people who are not actually photographers. They just want to have a camera that produces good pictures. Mm. Generally, they won't buy another lens or won't upgrade their bodies until it's broken. So for people like this, D3500 with 18 to 55 set up is actually really good value for money. It is. And for example, someone contacted me the other day and said, look, I'm not a photographer, but I'm traveling. I want something that is better than my phone and I'm willing to carry around a slightly yeah. bigger camera. What should I get? And her budget was like £250. And I said, okay, if you can't stretch the little bit more to the D3500, mm -hmm. then look for a secondhand D3200 mm -hmm. or even a D3100. Those will come well within the budget and with a lens and will still give you better results than your phone. Agreed. Absolutely. So with this out of the way, let's move on to full frame. Yes. Full, yeah. full frame is a tougher one. All because right. the price jumps up and it's... I agree, yes. And it's like, how much do you love this person? Do you really want to spend that kind of money? <laughs> Wouldn't you want to buy it for yourself? Exactly. So when I say, what shall I treat myself with? Mm -hmm. Myself is very important there. Yes. We There we have three... I wouldn't call them entry level onto the market, but we have Z5, Z6, and Z7 series of cameras mm -hmm. for mirrorless. And let's talk about mirrorless first, and then we're going to move on to DSLRs later. Okay. We also have Mark II versions of Z6 and Z7. Yes. So what do you think, let's say, as a best value for money, as a best entry level camera, and then a third one would be the camera for very keen enthusiasts who really wants to get something special. Like if the, if money is no object kind of thing? I would say so, but we will skip Z9, obviously, from this occasion. Yes. Since it's not going to get here before Christmas if you pre-order now. No. I would say in terms of best value for money, the Z5 now at its current price point is really, really good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a first foray into full frame. You can pick one up for about the same price as buying a Z50 full kit or a ZFC full kit. Mm -hmm. So the Z5 is a 
good value for money proposition for someone who wants an FX camera for not much more than the cost of a ZFC kit. That's true. Yeah. That's true. If the person doesn't mind secondhand item, then Z6 overall will be a better value because you can get it under the brand new price of Z5. Mm. And for video work, yeah. it's definitely an improvement. You also got a backlit sensor, so it is a little bit better in low light and in terms of dynamic range as well. Absolutely. So Z6, in my opinion, is a better choice, but it's a second hand and some people like everything new, so there's no problem with that. And obviously, if you're looking at bundles, then again, Z5 with a brand new item maybe make more sense yeah. than, let's say, buying two second hand items separately. So, but have a look at that. That might be an option. Absolutely. So, what about Z7 then? In terms of the present for money is no object, mm -hmm. the Z7 II is a, is a beautiful camera. Mm -hmm. Really, it is. And it's a premium gift for Indeed. anyone, but it can do pretty much everything that any of the other cameras can do and more absolutely so i'd say if you want something that's kind of the ultimate then the z7 mark ii would you advise mark ii over mark one version of the cameras there's only a small difference and that's the autofocus capabilities but the fact that it's got that extra processor for autofocus does make a difference saying that the z7 mark one now has the new firmware which makes it so much better than it was before. So I would like to see if they do something like that for the Mark II version. Exactly. So saying that, there's also a rumor of the firmware version for Z7 and Z6 Mark II cameras, mm. which also should improve the difference between Generation 1 cameras even further. So stay tuned. Unfortunately, again, nothing confirmed as of yet, and it's been rumored for a long, long time. I would say stay tuned and fingers crossed. Yep, exactly. Okay, well, let's talk about DSLRs then. So if you're looking into full-frame DSLR range, mm. What options do we have at the moment? We have the D780 mm -hmm. and we have the D850. Now, the D780 comes in, if you get the kit, it's actually on offer at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to just under £2,000 okay. for, for the body only, or to about two and a half if you mm -hmm. buy the kit. This is a hybrid camera. So I do really advocate the D780, although some people will want the extra resolution of the D850. I mean, I know what your choice would be. Yeah, D850 is the best value for money in full frame space. It is the best full frame camera, full stop. Yeah. So if you want to get the best camera in DSLR range, you can't really go wrong with D850. However, of course, it's more on the expensive side. It is. However, again, secondhand is an option. Indeed, on the absolutely. We are starting to get more of those in because people are switching to mirrorless. So if you want to pick up a bug and definitely have a look at the secondhand section of our website. Exactly. We have not mentioned mm -hmm. accessories. Yes. What is the top accessory of 2021, Becky? Okay, well, what's on my list is the Billingham 35 backpack in navy and chocolate. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I've already got the sage and chocolate and the, the navy I've seen in the mm -hmm. flesh and it's amazing. But I would say, for example, any Billingham product will last literally a lifetime. They mm -hmm. have that kind of guarantee on them. So I think it's worth investing in something like that. If you want a gift for the photographer that has everything, then do have a look at the Billingham selection. I can't recommend it enough. Okay. And there's a small accessory. I would recommend a Peak Design Tech Pack. Yes, you got yours. And the reason I'm saying this <laughs> is because I use one myself yeah. and you can see how it's stuffed to the brim with things and it still can manage to feed everything. Yeah, I've got one as well and uh, I absolutely love it. So it's true, if you've got a budget of sort of 50 pounds thereabouts, then yep. you can absolutely get one of those. The The Peak strap setup is also fantastic because you can literally switch the strap from any camera. So there's some smaller kind of stocking filler or smaller gifts if you don't like the person that much. <laughs> no. <laughs> smaller gifts if your budget is not, you know, camera and lens level, then uh, then those are, are great options too. Absolutely. And then if you're still struggling, then DP Review published two guides as well, gift guides for 2021. One's called just best gifts for photographers in 2021 in general. If you also have a person who uses film, then there's a separate article which is called the best gifts for film photographers. Ooh. Yay. I should read that. <laughs> for me. <laughs> All right. And now is the moment you've all been waiting for. And it's called SIPA Numbers for October 2021. SIPA! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, SIPA Numbers are important because they give us a view of the market in general and how things have been selling. Absolutely. We've missed a couple of months because the newsfeed was filled with Z9 news and lens announcements. Mm -hmm. But now it's 
slow week. So we're going to talk about them again. But there's a couple of notes I made, which I want to talk about. So let's start from the beginning. Compared to the same sales numbers of October 2020, the DSLI units were down 45.5%. Mirrorless units were down 37.8%. So they are quite down compared to the same time last year. Hmm. Mirrorless now has a 58% unit share of all interchangeable lens cameras and 77.2% of shipped value. So how much money they made. Yeah. So that's compared to all DSLRs and mirrorless combined. Based on the first 10 months, Nikon Rumors is expected the sales figures for this year to reach between 5.3 to 5.7 millions of all interchangeable lens cameras shipped. This is about the same as 2020, which was 5.3 million, but much lower than 2019, which is 8.4 million, or 2018, which was 10.7 million. It's interesting seeing that decline. Indeed. So mm. again, we talked a lot about photographic market shrinking. It is still happening. So there's no way around it. But again, I personally think that hopefully once we pass the pandemic and once the mirrorless market, because you can see that it's increased the share. Yeah. So I just hope that it's going to continue to increase. And obviously with the new technologies coming in and the cameras becoming so amazing yeah. that I personally think that eventually it will pick up. But I think the whole world situation affects the shipments as well as semiconductor shortage. Of course. The interesting bits are geographic shares. That's what I want to talk about. So let's start with DSLRs. Okay. So the unit shipped was 1,867,000, mm -hmm. okay? So that's year to date, which is 2% down compared to last year. So it's about the same, Okay. which is a good news. So yes. which means that DSLR are still selling fairly well. So they're not dropping significantly. Europe is being the main buyer of DSLR. So uh, they buy 40.6% of all shipments and United States of America, 31%. Interesting. Everyone else is quite behind, okay? So that is interesting to see. Now, in terms of, spending money mm. on DSLRs, Europe is way ahead. They're spending 35.1% of all shipped value. So that means they're buying more expensive DSLRs. The second place is way behind the 26.6% and it's the United States. Everyone else is way, way back, okay? Yeah. So this is important to know. Now for mirrorless, it's very interesting because China becomes one of the main market for mirrorless systems. Yes. With warping 25.4%. So now we have Europe and United States are slightly ahead of 272 and 283 mm. But if you combine the Asia, so we've got Japan, Asia, so, you know, Thailand and all other countries, that contributes to 40.8% of all mirrorless ships. So mirrorless systems are a lot more in demand in Asia compared to Europe and uh, United States. So in Europe and the United States, the concentration still seems to be heavily on DSLRs, which is interesting. Absolutely. And then if you look as well at shipped value, so actually how much money is spent, China is at 28.3%. And the United States at 28.8%. Oh, so, so the US is buying slightly more expensive cameras, but very slightly. Absolutely. I want to refer you to latest Nikon financial reports that they published about a month ago, and where they say that China is becoming a very important market for Nikon. And those figures that we see here actually show that. Yes, they do. All right. Well, let's go to the lenses. So the total amount of lenses shipped year to date is 7,911,000. That's DX lenses shipped 4,178,000 lenses with the facts 3,733. This is very important because DX lenses are still out shipping full frame lenses. Yes, although this does include mirrorless and DSLR. Doesn't matter. Yeah. The, my point is that DX is very important to any camera manufacturers. It is. And we can't stress it enough that Nikon DX line has to be looked after. I'm very pleased that Nikon announced the roadmap with announcements of Z9, where they include a couple of DX lenses just to tell us that there are more DX lenses that will be produced. So one of them are ultra wide angle lens. We yep. also had a pancake lens, yep. which is very nice. What a lot of people forget that DX cameras are generally being the inexpensive bit. They do sell higher figures and they also introduce more people into the system. Yes. When people are getting their new camera and they say they're buying, they're on the budget, they're buying their first DX camera, they also look at the lenses that are available for the camera. Yes. Yeah, and true. if the system has two or three DX lenses and nothing else, then they may choose the system that has 20 lenses. So... There is a reason why, let's say, Fuji XF series is doing really well. Yes, and it's also got other brands making lenses, which is helpful, I would say. Absolutely. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> so that's why I'm very glad that Nikon is going to release more lenses for DX, and hopefully they will announce a few more next year. Yes. So that's 
is for you an assessment of super numbers. If you have more to add to those figures, do leave your comment below. Next up, the new Capture 122 will be launched on December 9th, 2021. <laughs> All right, so new features include panorama stitching, HDR merging, auto rotate, which is very apparently the most important feature of them all, and have those small improvements. Let us know if you're gonna upgrade to this one or you're gonna skip this one. I'm a little bit underwhelmed, but to be honest with you, I wasn't impressed with uh, Lightroom and Adobe releases this year as well. Mm. My question is, since we moved on to yearly updates and subscriptions. Yes. The question is, obviously subscriptions are good for the business because they know how much money are coming through. Mm -hmm. From the other point of view, it doesn't encourage them to create more. Sure. It doesn't encourage them to push the envelope a little bit high and introduce more features. To, in order to get more people on board. You absolutely. Mean? That's absolutely. interesting. Yeah, I can see why you would why you would look at it that way. I mean, I kind of look at it from the view, viewpoint of how much more can they add to something which is essentially a photo editing tool. But there's always new developments that, that could be. But what, what's on your wish list of new developments? Do you have any? To be honest with you, I'm a little bit old school, so I still use my Photoshop CC 2022 as I would use Photoshop CS6. Yeah. So I don't really use all the automated <laughs> stuff. No. I don't shoot panoramas, don't do HDR merging that much. I mean, I do sometimes when I shoot interiors, but I try to dial it down to the point where it actually looks real. Right. But in my opinion, I think the most important things for me is actually the code, how fast it runs on the computer. Right. Because what we start to see is that the software has become bigger and bigger and more bloated and yeah. everything starts to get slow. And the only way to sort this issue is actually buying a new computer computer so which is sad which is sad because a lot of the computers that even from let's say five-year-old computers are still absolutely fine because d850 came out a while ago so five-year-old computers should run 45 megapixel cameras unless you're on the latest software that's bloating the memory yes because um, of all its features exactly yeah. exactly another thing obviously i do like the improvements that we get with the m1 chip on macbook so because obviously that's been introduced what about two years ago now mm. and not many software companies actually switch them out likely adobe and uh, capture one have done that so i'm still looking at more improvement there in terms of speed you know the funny thing is obviously the, a lot of audio companies mm -hmm. who produce the software for audio mixing and editing they haven't switched to a one processor yet, so something ah. like Logic Pro. And if you do video side of things, sometimes it becomes quite important. And then if yes. you have the latest mark, you may find that the software that should run really fast does not. So those things are on my wish list. I can First see that you... <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to something that you probably will be more interested in. Yes. The new lenses announcements from third party. Yeah, so we have Zhongyi Optics. They've yeah. announced a Mitacon Speedmaster. I love the names Speed of these lenses. Master. 90 millimeter F1.5 lens for the Z mount. It is priced at $599 and available mm. in silver and black. All right, so what are the features of the lens or specifications? So we have an aperture range of 1.5 to F16. Okay. Two extra low dispersion elements. Wow, not one, but two. Mm -hmm. One ultra high refraction element. Okay. Mm, it's manual focus. All right. Nine round blade aperture. So that's pretty good because bokeh should be really nice and smooth on this one. Very nice. It is also M mount compatible with third party AF adapters i.e. Megadap, etc. That's an interesting one because normally they won't include this information in there. So no. that's pretty good. I can see. And it's 770 grams. Okay. But the fact that they're including that information makes me believe that more and more people are opting for the Megadap slash Techart, you know, adapter route to focus on there. That's true. My so hope is that they will improve the firmware so they can improve what's focused on those because at the moment they're quite slow, aren't they? Very slow. Very, very slow. To be honest, I use mine as a second FTZ and often switch it to manual focus instead of autofocus. But the autofocus is there for the convenience exactly. if you need it. I wouldn't um, call it the main feature, isn't it? No. <laughs> okay. No, exactly. Then we also have the new Sirui 50 mm -hmm. millimeter T 2.9 1.6 times full frame anamorphic lens for the Nikon Z mount. That's available for pre order. All right. So this one is aimed at videographers. Mm. So with an anamorphic view, you know, where you record it's all like of compressed and then you stretch it. So cool. And it looks wonderful. And if you remember the Star Trek and all those lights across the frame, that's the stuff you get with this type of lens. I'd love for us to try one of those. I think it'd yeah. be really great. Yeah. yeah. Shall we put it on our wish list? Yes. It's uh, $1,499. So okay. it's not as cheap as some of the third party lenses, but it's not yeah. expensive for a videographer. Yeah, lens. shall we cross it off our wish list? So <laughs> now knowing the price. <laughs> now we've changed our mind. Um, no, it's it, for a cinematography lens, essentially, which is mm -hmm. kind of what it is. And that's not that's not expensive compared to what they normally 
charge for those things. So, all right, anyway. well, not bad. And then we also have some leather cases for Nikon Z6 and Z7 cameras, obviously Mark II cameras as well. So if you are into leather, do check them out. <laughs> In our review section, Matt Irwin published a video called Before You Buy Nikon Z 50mm f1.2 S versus 1.8 S versus, bit of a curveball here, the uh, Mickey, we're going to go with 1.2. I would have pronounced it Mike. Or Miki, but uh, I don't actually know how it's supposed Mickey. to be pronounced. He's pronounced it Miki, so we're going to go with that. So he's posted a real world review as to which one he likes best, considering okay. there's a considerable price difference between them, might be worth watching. Let me bet. I think Nikon won this one. I should hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to Weekend Read and Watch. Yeah. So the best and worst video gear of 2021 by DP Review TV is up on YouTube. All right, that includes all brands, and there's some love to Nikon as well. Yeah. And the next one is called Con may have found the replacement for the famous fireplace video that many people play on TV around Christmas. You know how it's called? What's it called? One Month of a Sun Remastered 4K by Sean Doran. And this is going to replace the fireplace yeah. traditional. Yeah. yeah, just put it on. Okay. Oh, it's a beautiful. In glorious 4K. So while you're watching this, I'm going to tell you. So Sean Doran turns Astro images into the wonderful videos. He used 78,846 frames of Angstrom 171 data from Solar Dynamics Observatory for this video. Wow. He repaired, processed, and rescaled the images captured during the August 2014 to create the final 4K resolution video. So this is 48-minute time-lapse that showcased Sun's movement during that month. That's phenomenal. I think that would be such a cool thing to have yeah. on in the background. Then you can have your Michael Bublé playing and exactly. your mince pies and your hot toddy. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you're going to feel like you're in Interstellar. <laughs> exactly. And thanks for joining us today. That's it for this week. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube. Uh, follow, maybe even a review if you're on a podcast platform. We would very much appreciate it. Absolutely. We also have more places to follow us on the internet. So we are on Instagram and Becky is... I'm Rebecca underscore Danese on Instagram. And I'm at Konstantin Kochkin. Nice and simple. And we will see you later this week on our live stream. For some of you who don't know, we actually have a live stream, which is live, and it's here. It's every Friday at 2.15 GMT, so come join us. You want to see the, some live action, us talking to the people, people talking back to us, and we discuss lots of photography subjects. That's very true. Thank you, you very much for watching. Bye-bye.